car here and I've got some good friends in this video today. I'm super, super excited to be joining my friends from Creature Comfort Pet Therapy, one of my favorite organizations on the planet. And for so many reasons, not just because the dogs are incredibly cute and they do great work and the people are awesome, um, but there's so much more to pet therapy than people really realize. Now you'll see the furry scurry. We're gonna talk all about the furry scurry, but I first wanna introduce Mary Beth Cooney, who is really the passion, the soul, and the heart behind Creature Comfort. So Mary Beth, it's so great to be with you. I'm so happy that we were able to connect. I had such a blast last year um, hosting the Champagne Brunch. It was just an amazing event, and I'm a little bummed we can't do it again this year, but we're doing the Furry Scurry, so I'm, I'm really, really honored that you guys asked me to be a part of this as well. Introduce yourself and talk to me and everybody watching a little bit about Creature Comfort. Absolutely, Terry. Thank you so much for having us on tonight today, and we were thrilled to have you last year at the brunch. And again, sorry to miss seeing you in person, but this is the closest next best thing. So we're really happy that you're joining us for the Furry Scurry. I'm Mary Beth Cooney, as you said, I have been in nonprofit management for over 25 years, and I am lucky enough to be the executive director of Creature Comfort Pet Therapy. So this organization is, uh, it, we are basically a nonprofit that certifies animals and their owners to do visits with people in need of healing comfort. And you're gonna hear me say healing comfort quite a bit through this because it truly is the essence of pet therapy. Imagine being in a hospital room, a dog walks in, wagging tail, smiling eyes, and the effect is powerful. Your body relaxes, you feel relief, that's what Creature Comfort is all about. I've experienced it not only from having family members that have had pets visit them in the hospital, but I also have experienced it at WDHA events. We've had listeners that have come out to events and I know that they're going through something in life, whether it's cancer, chemotherapy, a divorce, the loss of a family member, and we've had Creature Comfort animals at our events. And it's so incredible. I mean, there's nothing better than seeing a dog, and you talked about wagging tail, but then they're wearing a vest that says pet me. I mean, it's just an absolute perfect storm to cheer somebody up. So I've seen the effect firsthand on when these animals go out and they're looking at you and they've got the pet me vest on and everybody's spirit and mood just perks up. Now, I wanna go back to the beginning because how did Creature Comfort start? Who had the idea, the passion, and it's not easy to put an organization like this together. No, it's not. But in 2011, two women, Joan Baer and Annie Murphy, just knew that the power of pet therapy was there. And they wanted to have people be able to receive this unconditional love that these animals bring. So in only nine years, this organization has blossomed into hundreds of volunteers Last year alone, 5,000 hours of visits. Wow. And, and, and we touched over 70,000 people. So you can imagine that's 70,000 smiles at least. Oh. So that, that's how it all started. And that was back um, only nine years ago. And it's just, it's just taken off and it's in huge demand. Right and places like hospitals don't just do this because it's fun for the patients. I mean, there's a physical benefit to having this light come into your life even for a few minutes. So talk to me about the physical benefit that people gain from having pet therapy. Absolutely. It's basically the reason that pet therapy works is actually really simple. Everyone, people, all have a need for a loving touch. And petting a calm, loving animal releases a hormone in your brain. It's called oxytocin. And for a long time, it's been known as the warm and fuzzy hormone. And that is because it really produces a feeling of love. It produces a feeling of social bonding and well-being. And we all need that right now more than ever. And believe it or not, it's not just us as the people that get it, the dogs get it too, or the cats and all the other animals that we have in the program. So it, it, it both ways. It works between the human animal bond works both ways. Yeah, I love, well, who is your therapy bunny too? I love your therapy bunny. He's so cute. Yeah. 
he goes around in his little carriage and and i love that because he's so small and he can sort of get on a bed or for maybe a child that is a little trepidatious about petting a dog i mean it's not just therapy dogs you mentioned you know therapy cats yeah. and, and your therapy yeah. bunny is just amazing so talk to me also about it's not just hospitals i mean there are so many places that these animals visit to provide comfort and mental care. So talk to me about some of the places you work with, Mary Beth. Absolutely. Um, and yes, we have dogs, cats, rabbits, guinea pigs, ferrets. And wow. We have, and we have had a mini goat and a mini horse, but they're both retired right now. <laughs> so we could always have another. And Enjoying and, the good life. Exactly. But some of the places that you'd expect we go to, of course, hospitals and nursing homes. But it's really about the types of visits that we address and the types of needs that we address and the people that we visit. So we have 275 teams and I like to say that that's half, well actually that would be 550 because half of them have four legs and half have two. Right. So, uh, and so these people, these amazing people and their pets actually go out and we have a centralized system of communication and we know all our volunteers and we partner with these facilities to create these effective visits. So we regularly visit places like a battered women's home where we help those families relax and feel safe. We visit a county prosecutor's office where we actually hopefully relieve the fear of victims of crime, including children. We go to a veteran's home to help those who, of course, are suffering from trauma. We go to food banks to help those stressed by food insecurity. Wow. I mean, the variety of things that we do is much broader than most people think. And we also have an on-call service. And the on-call program we use in an emergency. Uh, and we have been called more than once to schools that when there is a traumatic crisis and we are there the next day with this understanding volunteers and again, those wagging tails. These are calm, loving animals who love everyone and really love to be petted by strangers. And they bring this unconditional love and they build that connection to bring what I was talking about, the healing comfort. So talk to me a little bit about the COVID crisis because obviously everything came to a crashing halt at a time where people need it the most. So how has it affected Creature Comfort and how has it affected the animals that are part of the program? Yes, thank you. That's a very, very important question. So usually we do partner with over 200 facilities and we normally do eight to 17 visits a day, 365 days a year. That is wild. That did wow. come to a crashing halt. It was very hard. And so what we did, we quickly adjusted and transitioned ourselves to virtual visits. We also began to send some beautiful photographs and videos to the frontline workers because we work with many of them, hospitals, nursing homes, those are all frontline people. And so we, we began to send them things and then we started the virtual visits. Um, we always laugh at how you keep a dog in front of a screen for very long, but uh, maybe you put peanut butter on it. But um, <laughs> basically the, the dogs are missing it and the cats and rabbits, everybody's missing it too. Sure. Way we engaged our, our volunteers by having them at least do virtual visits to start. But now we're starting back and we're starting with in-person visits very slowly with safety, safety protocols in place. And we have about three, we have many actually coming up, but we're going to start them very carefully. And especially things like EMTs, we're going to go out and help them. We need to get out there and we need to start helping them again in person. That's really what this is about. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So let's talk about how we're doing it this year. Furry Scurry, uh, very, very important to the organization. And you have a theme of heroes helping heroes. So talk about how people can get involved and how Furry Scurry is going to work this year. It's, it's exciting. It's definitely different. And um, I'm really looking forward to it because, you know, I'm a walker, you know, by nature. So I love walking, whether it's, you know, I, I walk in like increments. I, I walk with each dog separately. Then I walk by myself. So I spend a lot of time walking. It's a great head clearer. So how are you guys doing Furry Scurry this year? It is. So yes, that's, that's what we're doing. So we decided that um, we had to transition to a, to a virtual event. And this fundraiser is highly important. The visits are subsidized by our fundraising. So it's how we sustain the operations of Creature Comfort through the grants, the donors, the events, and the loss of income during COVID has been significant. So this year, we are so excited. We are having a walkathon with real walking for the whole month of October. It's going to be so much fun. There is no registration fee. 
It's a healthy opportunity that anyone can participate in. You can be it. You can do it from wherever you are. The, we're going to have weekly raffle prizes. We're going to, you can win an exclusive furry, cur, furry scurry t-shirt um, that will, if you raise $100 or more. And we've set the goal at 3,000 steps a day, which is about a mile and a half. Because which is perfect. I mean, that's perfect. It's, it's doable, right? Yeah, and, very doable. And it actually has meaning behind it because it is the number of visits and we're honoring our volunteers because that's what they have done every year is 3,000 visits. Oh, wow. So, yeah, so we, we, of course, we want to get back to that, and, and it's in honor of our volunteers that we chose that number. But you set your own walking goals. It's okay if you don't do the full mile and a half every day. You also set your own, um, your own fundraising goals, and we hope that, that you make it challenging and you reach out to friends and family to support it, and that's how this is. It just, it just spreads by individuals, and it's already spreading. We are so excited. We opened our registration on September 1st, and we already have teams jumping on. Um, our goal is $60,000. Wow. So we're already up to 12. So we're still Excellent. Well starting. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And we got to get the word out and we want everybody to get involved. And again, it's something that you can do for yourself. It's something you can do with your dog. It's something you can do with your kids. And um, it supports an absolutely incredible cause. I know a lot of the dogs too that are part of the organization because some of the dogs are near and dear to our heart at WDHA because they've entered our ultimate rock dogs contest. We had Oreo who right. was our ultimate rock dog actually was like the big winner out of hundreds of dogs and tens of thousands of votes uh, two years ago. And Danny had also been in our calendar, another great dog. And this year we're actually going to have uh, snuggles is going to be in snuggles is one of my favorite dogs. I have like a history with snuggles. I, I think Nancy snuggles human might know that, but I'm going to, we're going to bring Nancy and Snuggles in for a minute. I'm like, so, I'm like so excited. Don't get me wrong. I love talking to you. But when I found out that Snuggles was going to be Zooming, I was like, oh, I need the therapy today. They always upstage us. It's okay. That's the idea. <laughs> We're so used to that. Our dogs, dogs always do. Um, but, you know, I know the dogs that are involved with Creature Comfort. And I love the fact that so many of them have their own sort of rescue stories you know they they this is a great organization because not only does it help people but it shows that animals that come from maybe not so great a start can have a wonderful amazing incredible purpose in life because i think every single dog that we've had in our calendar that's a creature comfort dog is a rescue dog right it's a dog that somebody threw right. away as trash and didn't want and um and now it's part of the, name, the, um, the theme that you talked about, the theme of Heroes Helping Heroes. That's partly why we did that, because these little furry animals are so ready to go out and help all the frontline heroes and everyone else. And we really feel like they are heroes. They're just, they're ready and willing to go anywhere, help anyone at any time who is in need. So, yeah. and they come from need, some of them, like you're yeah. saying, and they, yeah. and they want to help people in need. So I, that really is, that really is our goal is to get our heroes out to help all the other heroes that are out there. And they are, they are such amazing little heroes. All right, should we bring, should we bring some of them in? Yes. I would love to. Yeah. So I know Lisa and Oreo yes. are going to be joining us. Yes. And then uh, there's my, there's my boy yes. snuggle. Look at them. These faces. I love, 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 love. I, I, I have definitely kissed and gotten lip gloss on both of these dogs. There's no doubt about it at a WDHA event. Nancy is there with Snuggles. I don't know if Nancy remembers, but you probably met Snuggles the same day I met him, which was at Mutt's Mania, correct? See, she has to unmute. Nancy, you have to unmute. We'll just unmute Nancy. Yeah. There we go. Okay. There we go. Yeah. There we go. So, right, Nancy, you met him at, at Mutt's Mania, and you, did you just fall in love with this guy? Because he was poor Snugs. He doesn't look, didn't look then like he looks now. Correct. He had all the little pink skin and the mange and, and just had such a tough beginning. And this was a dog who was smiling and wagging at every single person. They were carrying him around like a baby at the event. And I just, I fell in love with him and then heard that he was adopted and then heard he became a, a creature comfort dog. And it just blew my doors off. So Nancy, tell me a little bit about your connection with the dog and how did Snuggles, how did you know Snuggles? was going to be great at this. So I was like you. I was at the event and I was talking up Creature Comfort at a table and I had my eye on him. He kept looking at me like we were familiar. 
And I kept looking back at him and I could tell by watching him that he was just a sweetheart of a dog who was very, very uncomfortable. His skin was really uncomfortable. And um, I owned him for a year after a lot of medical attention. I owned him for a year and um, got him certified with Creature Comfort as a therapy dog. He's just, like you said, he's always smiling. He's just so happy to meet anyone. And we do a lot with behavioral health for those same exact reasons. He's not judging anyone when he visits anyone in a behavioral health center. Um, depression right now is gigantic and I just love to bring a smile to anyone's face, even if it's the gas station attendant. He just lo loves to um, bring smiles to people's faces. He's a great dog. He brings smiles to my face all the time because I'm not going to lie, I follow him on Instagram. <laughs> and he uh, he Stainless plug, what's his Instagram again? Um, we need more snuggles. We need more snuggles. And I follow him on Instagram and I see him, you know, whether you're cooking food and he's got his paws up on the stove or, you know, I'm such a, such a fan uh, of snuggles and he, he's just such a great dog. And it's so nice to see that he's got this great sense of purpose. Um, now, Lise, I know Oreo only too well. Um, when we shot the Ultimate Rock Dogs calendar, uh, me and Oreo were in the car for a good two hours together. And he's such a patient, sweet guy. He was such a good guy on our photo shoot. Um, Oreo, for those that are watching that don't know him as well as we know him, Oreo cannot hear. He's a deaf dog. So how did you know he would make such a great um, therapy dog? When we got him, there was just something about him that he loves people. He always wants to make everybody happy. His tail is always wagging. Thumbs up, which you see me do a lot, is his favorite sign, which means he's being a good boy. That makes his tail wag even faster. And we just figured we'll give it a shot and see what happens. And he absolutely loves going to work. He puts his vest on, he knows it's work time, and he just gets so, so excited about it. Now, guys, have the pups missed being out and doing what they do? Did you see any sort of like behavioral changes in them where you know they're ready to get back out there and ready to do their work? Yes, terribly. We got to the point where he um, was at the front door when the UPS driver came, and I said to him, if you don't mind, I don't mind. And so he almost went into the UPS driver's truck. He was so happy just to see somebody and I guess UPS drivers have a dog following. So that really made his day. Oh man. And Lisa, how about, how about for Oreo? Oreo, definitely. He just misses people and getting that attention. And I mean, he has me and my husband and his sister Chloe, but it's just not the same as going out and making people smile and getting lots of pets and kisses and everything from people. And uh, Mary Beth, what is the feedback that you've gotten from people that haven't had creature comfort visits, whether it's a hospital or, you know, a shelter or, you know, somebody who, who you know has been uh, a regular participant in creature comforts and then all of a sudden it sort of has not, has not happened for them for a while. What is the feedback that you've received? Yes, we've really, it's been people reaching out to us and, and we were reaching out, as we said, through virtual visits. And they were highly grateful for that. They said almost anything was good to help because we're all knowing that the stress level and the anxiety level and the loneliness and the, it, it's just higher than ever. And so it's been a lot of people reaching out saying, let us know what you can do. And we've, again, we've offered the virtual visits, but now we've got a long list of people who are saying, can we start slowly? Please, please come back. So, um, yeah, even if at the hospital, we are doing um, four times a week, we're doing what they call office hours, and they're just putting it up for the staff. It's not the patients yet, it's the staff. But the staff are able to come on, it's a standard time that we're on, and the staff come on and they choose to, to be there, and it's, some of them are doing lunch hours so they can be on, uh, and they're getting good, really good groups of people because, you know, they're just looking for this. Yeah, so, absolutely. It does still bring the smiles. We're happy about that. But we all know that hugging and petting is what we really need. So it's going to be important for us to get back out there. Hugging, petting, and kissing. I'm always the, the person in the can I kiss your dog shirt. Um, and, and I love, you know, and these dogs are just, that's what they're there for. They're custom made for that. They're custom made for hugging, you know, and, and seeing them at events is always so wonderful. I remember um, when I first met Lisa, 
And she said, you know, oh, well, we can come out with some of the dogs at, you know, your WDHA event. Would, would that be cool? And I was like, oh, that's absolutely incredible. And again, seeing listeners that I know personally that are going through something in their lives and just seeing how they respond with these dogs is just incredible. So Mary Beth, let everybody know again how they can get in touch uh, with you guys and how they can get involved in the furry scurry so we can make sure that everybody who wants to participate and help raise some funds and you know help keep creature comfort pet therapy moving forward this year in a year that's been so tough for so many how can we help out thank you you can join the furry scurry by going to our rep website it's www.cctherapy.org and just click on the Furry Scurry event page. Uh, again, it's free to register. It's a great way to be healthy while raising money for a very impactful mission. And we are so grateful to you, Terry. We just are thrilled to have you on board with us. And I'm so excited to help you guys out. I'm bummed I'm not going to get to see everybody and the dogs and the bunny. Um, we'll, get you, you know, we'll, get on, we'll get you on one of our Zoom. We've been doing Zoom calls. I, want, I need one. one here. I just need let one. the dogs say hi to each other. And yeah. we will get you on one of those so you can see a whole mass of our volunteers at one time. I would love that. I want everybody to know, too, to listen to WDHA because we will have information on how you can get involved as well with um, Furry Scurry. And I thank you guys so much especially for bringing the pups on today because that was my little bit of creature comfort pet therapy. I've missed Oreo. I've missed Snuggles. I've missed seeing them at WDHA events, two of our stars. And by the way, Nancy, congratulations because Snuggles is going to be in the calendar this year. In the calendar. Yeah. He's such a great He's dog. He's going to be fit as a fiddle once he finishes his walk. Yes, he is going to be fit as a fiddle. He looks amazing to me right now, though. And um, you ladies are just doing great things, making such a difference, not only in the lives of people, but in the lives of these animals that you're so committed to and, um, you know, bettering their lives and, and helping them better the lives of others. So thank you all for everything that you guys are doing. It's so, so incredibly important. And again, this year, more than ever, we need therapy, pet therapy, more than, more than ever before. Absolutely. More than ever before. Uh, Mary Beth and Nancy and Lisa and Oreo and Snuggles, thank you all so much. I'm going to be walking with my girls. Um, I cannot wait to sign up for the Furry Scurry. And uh, thank you guys so much for joining me. Mm -hmm.